Open market operations is a relatively large topic that we're going to talk about in the upcoming two lectures. So we're going to split this into two separate lectures. First we're going to look at the definitions, and that's what we're going to look at in this video. And then in our second video we're going to look at how open market operations actually works. So how open market operations operate in order to set the target cash rate. So we're going to look at, firstly, what open market operations actually is. So open market operations refer to the selling or buying of unsecured loans or securities in the overnight money market. The overnight or short term money market. So that's the first definition we're going to look at, is this idea of open market operations. Now second definition that we're going to look at is what we call the cash rate. Now the cash rate can be split up into two separate definitions. Firstly we'll look at the actual cash rate then secondly we'll look at the target cash rate. So what the actual cash rate is, is the interest rate paid. So the interest rate paid on the overnight money market. Now, if we want to borrow something for the bank, if we want to take out a mortgage for a house, then we're going to pay interest rates to a bank. This is a similar concept. The cash rate is the interest rate paid or the cost of borrowing credit. So the interest rate is actually the cost of borrowing credit in the overnight money market. So if banks want to take out loans from the overnight money market in order to pay off their debts or their financial obligations in the next financial day and they're going to work with the overnight money market for short-term unsecured loans. Now the target cash rate is different. This is the what the RBA wants the actual cash rate to be. So they conduct in open market operations to manipulate this target cash rate to make it as slow uh, as as close as possible to the actual cash rate. So what the RBA wants the actual cash rate to be. And how they manipulate this target cash rate is by manipulating the supply of money or the monetary base. Now we talked about this idea of the monetary base being currency or the currency circulating the economy plus reserves with the RBA. And the commercial banks keep these reserves in what we call ESAs, or Exchange Settlement Accounts. And that's our fourth definition we're going to look at. Exchange Settlement Accounts. Now, if we can use the analogy that we have a banks or we have accounts with our banks, by the same token, NAB, ANZ, Westpac, and Commonwealth have accounts with the RBA. So as we know, the RBA's one of the RBA's main uh, roles or responsibilities is to act as the official bank to the commercial banks, as well as to the federal government. And so the primary purpose of these exchange settlement accounts is to provide a basis for the settlement of obligations for the settlement of debt obligations. So as we know, hundreds of thousands of transactions occur each financial day. And as we know, many of us are with different banks because the financial system has been deregulated in the past couple of years. So what this means is at the end of the financial day, Westpac may owe NAB have much money. And so ANZ, by the same analogy, may owe Commonwealth Bank however much money. 
And so what they use is they use these exchange settlement accounts to settle any debt obligations ANZ may owe to Commonwealth or NAB may owe to Westpac. And this is done through what we call a net deferred settlement scheme. So what they do is that they settle these accounts at the end of the financial day. And the exchange settlement accounts, like any bank accounts, pays an interest, and this is 25 basis points less than the official cash rate. So if the cash rate is paying 4%, then the interest paid on the exchange settlement accounts would be 25 basis points less, so 3.75%. And so what this means is that many ADIs, so authorized deposit taking institutions such as NAB or Commonwealth, have very little incentive to keep excess funds in these exchange settlement accounts. Although by uh, by financial regulation, by the Australian Prudential Regulation Authority or the APRA, they require these banks to have surplus funds in these exchange settlement accounts so that they don't run this risk of illiquidity over the business day, which may cause contagion risk over the entire financial sector. So what they do, or what these banks do, is they keep a sufficient amount of money in these exchange settlement accounts, but without keeping too much in it so they're losing money. So they keep just enough and they, when they have a surplus of funds in the exchange settlement account, they will then start to trade in this overnight money market. And this overnight money market has an interest rate which is equal to the to the actual cash rate. So they're the main definitions that we need to understand. So the monetary base, this being base. So they're the four main uh, definitions that we need to know in order to understand open market operations. Firstly, open market operations basically is the selling or buying of unsecured loans or securities in the open market or short-term money market. The cash rate can be split up into the actual or the target cash rate, being the interest rate or the cost of borrowing credit on the overnight money market. The monetary base is what the RBA actually manipulates in order to change the target cash rate or to change the actual cash rate to match the target cash rate and the monetary base being all currency in circulation, so notes and coins, plus government reserves in the exchange settlement accounts or shortened to ESA and the ESA being exchange settlement accounts is is the are these accounts that provide a basis for the settlement of debt obligations between financial institutions and the exchange settlement account pays 25 basis points less than the official cash rate so with these definitions in mind we can move on to the next lecture on how open market operations actually work